Hi everybody, this is the Math 31 optimization review. This is question three. It says a cylindrical boiler with an open top is to be built from stainless steel with a copper bottom. The price of copper is five times the cost of stainless steel. Determine the most economical dimensions for the, the boiler if the volume is uh, five pi meters cubed. Okay, so cylindrical boiler with an open top here. Basically uh, what we've got here is this, actually I can draw that a little better. What we've got here is this little cylinder and we want to know the dimensions here. Um, that's going to be like height and radius. Those are really the dimensions that are that are significant to us. Now we are trying to figure out the most economical dimensions. Okay, Because of that what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a cost function. Okay, Cost and this is going to be the thing that we're going to try take the derivative of because this is the thing that we're trying to minimize. Okay, and, and bear in mind that we are trying to basically uh, minimize, this means right here we want to minimize cost. you got to interpret the question enough to see that. Okay, so we're going to make this out of stainless steel and copper and we know that the, the price of copper is five times the price of, of the stainless steel. So what we might state here is that, um, let's say that the price of the stainless steel is k dollars per uh, meter squared. Okay, this is going to be for the stainless steel, so that means the copper will be 5k per meter squared, and this will be the copper. So, for the side, okay, the material around the sides of this uh, cylindrical boiler here can be made out of stainless steel, and the relationship here is uh, going to be, uh, you think about it, the, the the distance along around the whole thing is going to be related to the the radius here. So this will be two pi r times the height. That's the lateral surface area, and then we're going to multiply this by k, okay, which is the cost of the stainless steel. And then we're going to add to this five k times the area of that bottom piece, which is simply going to be pi r squared. So this is the, the beast right here that we're going to take the derivative of. I just want to identify again that R and H are the variables here. K is not a variable. Okay? K is related to the price. We just we weren't given any information about that. We are, however, given one other bit of information to help us link these variables together, and that is this, that the volume is 5 pi. Okay, because the volume of a cylinder will be pi r squared h. Now when I uh, look at this uh, formula here, um, I would be tempted here to, well, I'd be tempted here to get rid of uh, a couple of things here, but I think the easiest thing to do here would be to solve for h. If you bring that pi r squared over, we're going to get that h is going to equal 5 over r squared. Okay, now the reason I'm solving for h here is we need to get that cost expression in terms of one of these variables. Uh, so I'm going to solve for one of them, but if I try to solve for r here, I'm going to end up with a square root with a little plus or minus. I'm just not interested in, in kind of fighting with that. So I think the easier thing to do is just solve for h. Besides that, h only shows up once in this whole expression. So now I can come over here and I'm going to set up my, my cost expression. And this will be 2 pi r times k, and then h will be 5 over r squared. And then I'll get 5k pi r squared uh, for the bottom. And if we simplify this, and there's really not a lot of simplification to go here, but I'm going to have an r over r squared. So this is going to end up being 10 uh, pi k over r plus 5k pi r squared. And now what we'll do is we'll take the derivative with respect to the radius. And so this is going to get us negative 10 pi k over r squared uh, plus 10, and I'm just going to follow suit here, pi k r. Okay. Now, so there's the derivative of cost with respect to, to the radius. And so now to maximize that, okay, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to set this thing equal to zero. And this will end up being negative 10 pi k over r squared plus 10 pi k r. Bring that over, we're going to get 
10 pi k over r squared equals 10 pi k r. Now, I, I hope you're seeing as well as I am that the 10 pi k, because those are all constants, are going to disappear here. I've got 1 over r squared. This is going to lead me to make this 1 over r cubed, which just simply tells me r is equal to 1. Okay, there is only one particular value for this. Um, so I, I can assume that this is going to be, now I, I can check this to see if this is actually going to give me uh, the minimum that I'm wanting here. And in fact, I, I probably should. Uh, so let's go over here and take a quick look at this. Here's, here's my derivative, by the way. The value that I picked here was uh, for r, or the value that I found here for r was 1. So let's just take a quick look at what the derivative is doing. If you pick a number, uh, if you pick a number, let's say bigger than bigger than one. Now I'm going to do this kind of outrageously here. Let's make this just really really huge. Let's make like a thousand, okay? So this is going to be ten pi k times a thousand, but this term right here is going to be ten pi k, basically the same the same coefficient here, divided by a thousand squared. Now that's going to make this term really really small. And so this term is going to dominate. The whole thing is going to become positive. So over here, this is, this is positive, meaning that the original function is increasing here. Now, if we pick a number less than one, and let's pick uh, again, let's pick, let's go, let's go a little bit nuts. Let's make it like negative a thousand. This term here is going to become negative. Uh, and once again, because we're dividing by r squared here, this term is going to become negligible. So over here, this will be this is going to be a negative interval, which means it's decreasing. So the original function decreases to 1 and increases after 1, making this a minimum, which is exactly what I was hoping we would find there. So we know that we found a minimum. Determine the most economical dimensions. Okay, well, we know that the radius then, therefore the radius has got to equal 1 meter. And if that's the case here to get the height, well, the nice thing is, is way over here I had already determined a relationship between those two. So 5 over 1 squared turns out the height is simply going to be 5 meters. And those are the dimensions that uh, are most economical based on the conditions of price.